Ponya here, your host of The Alchemy of Me, where we navigate the anatomy of humanity through the lens of science and spirituality. Let's unearth the layers and unravel the systems in place that dim who we are and how we live and experience life. On this journey together, we'll weave in an eclectic blend of mind, body, energy, medicine, concepts, tools, and practices that'll nourish the seeds, the fire, that gold of intelligence that is you. This is an opportunity, your opportunity to reclaim, to rediscover, to transform, to alchemize you. The Alchemy of Me show starts now. Hello, hello, welcome. I am Tonya, your host of The Alchemy of Me, where we navigate the anatomy of humanity through the lens and of science and spirituality. And today we are we are going to embark on something very special. Um, it's going to be a three-part series um, in sequence. And honestly, I am I'm feeling a lot right now, a lot of energy. So I don't really know what's going to happen. Um, we are going to dive into the matters of ancestral healing and i am so honored to have to have lucas mulva here and and i'll just share before i and well i'll introduce him first but so <clears throat> luke you have a very interesting background so i'm just going to i'm just going to share what you've shared with me um so luke has been mm -hmm. running ceremony for 15 years and practicing this way of life for 28 years he has not chosen this path, rather this path has chosen him. He does what the universe mm -hmm. asks him to do and surrenders to this responsibility with humility and reverence. He does not call himself a name because he feels all humans are sacred beings who can offer their gifts to the world. He has jokingly described himself as a human garbage disposal which we will talk about that later, uh, <laughs> due to his gift to remove imbalances, misqualifications, mental and physical sickness from people's consciousness. This gift was brought by the Bear Nation many years ago. He is a dedicated husband and father of four boys and walks to help the world to the best of his ability. He gives honor to all of those seen in the unseen and seen world that have helped and taught him along the way and the knowledge he shares regarding ancestral healing, providing info, important insights and information, the collective healing of humanity and the individual steps we all must take to spiritually evolve and manifest our sacred purpose on earth. So even just reading that, Luke, first of all, welcome. I'm just gonna tell you, like my knees started shaking because I can just feel the potency of what, your work is and what you're bringing forward. And so I just, first of all, not knowing what's going to come forward um, today and in future um, future times together, I just want to say thank you for being here and thank you for everything you bring um, forward into the world. And so with that, welcome. Mm -hmm. And is there anything else that you want to share um, about yourself um, that you're feeling called to to bring forward? Um, I think to start, what I'd like to do, and you mentioned this yesterday, is just to share a song. Mm. Um, and it's a special song that comes from both the Beaver Nation and the Deer Nation. And probably in this past six months, both of those those helpers have been showing up consistently. Uh, in our ancestral healing work, uh, in the ceremony we perform that people pre pre prepare many months for to undertake, which we'll talk about as the series goes on. Mm -hmm. But they both bring very uh, applicable medicines that are needed in our world right now. Um, one, the beaver uh, brings unconditional love into community. And when we work and really dig into people's un ancestral lines, what we see is one of the main missing components that has been generationally bred out of our consciousness is, is unconditional love. Um, and so in a ceremony, it's probably five months ago, 
the beaver asked to brave, be able to bring in bundles of unconditional love because they, they build dams, they build community. If you know anything about beavers, they'll even let other animals stay in their, their dens in the winter uh, to keep them safe. And so they asked if they could bring bundles of unconditional love in and place them into people's DNA that um, were missing them. And so we've been working with the beaver a lot um, and helping to build that resiliency through unconditional love, to build protection through unconditional love, and to help people be able to walk with that as, as a source of, of who they are. Um, the deer we honor as a giveaway nation, um, as a doctor and as a healer, particularly providing the medicine of gentleness and kindness. Um, in a prayer we've been saying a lot is we've been asking that the ability to walk with gentleness and kindness be a protection because there's so much divisiveness and hatred in our world at this time. Um, and that has to start to change. And so we've asked that deer to really bring that gentle grace uh, for people because one of the consistent messages we get is the suffering has to stop. We have to stop making ourselves suffer. We have to stop making others suffer. And so I'm going to sing this song to cap this off, to ask that that beaver nation and that deer nation will guide um, what we visit about, what we talk about, and allow it to penetrate people's hearts um, as, they, as they listen to this, as they reflect upon it, um, and learn what we're speaking of. So I'll sing that song now, um, and then we can roll. Perfect. Thank you, Luke. We are Thank you. You're welcome. That felt, that felt good, as you probably could feel. I'm a little more calm and not crying anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. Thank you. It is good. Yeah. I do want to share for anybody um, 
it doesn't matter if this is a completely new or somebody that's been kind of working through ancestral work or working with different traditions where the drum comes in or the beautiful work. I don't know. I just want to share um, that you have, you know, because I have been enjoying your Spotify channel, um, Sacred Walk. Is that is it just Sacred Walk on the mm-hmm. Spotify channel? Okay. So I've been using <clears throat> that a lot for myself to help um, grounding um, every day. So that has been very powerful. And I know I'm like, I can, it's like I connect with that and it feels very good. So I just thank you for kind of putting that out into the world. And I just wanted to share that to anybody that um, felt that same. Yeah, I guess felt that, felt that in their, in their bodies, that there, there's, there's an opportunity there to um, get more of that on Spotify. So um I want to, so I want to kind of go through like, you know, there's something that you said, you know, we've been, um, we just started kind of working together on, um, you know, I just started working through your, your program, um, some very early on and, you know, something that you had said, uh, right away that really hit a chord with me because I think, um, for me, and I don't, uh, hopefully this resonates with, with listeners is that, and I think in light, there's no accident that today is when we kick this off the day after, you know, a, a, we're not going to go into politics, but essentially like a decision (laughs) was made and we move forward. Right. Right. The energy. Yeah. But it's like, no matter what happened, there's a, there's such a polarity that we can all feel. And it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a polarity and the power of something that you said, I want to just bring forward. I'm going to, I'm going to actually read it because I wrote it down. Um, the weight of the world is not yours to carry. Um, you just have to do the heavy lifting for you. And I, I, that's so important, I think, at this time, because it literally feels like for um, where we're at in the world, it does feel like the weight of the world is um, is each of our burden. And so I just want to like I just want to kind of start there. Um, I don't know if anything's coming up, if that if that feels good. And at any time, if you're like, no, that's a terrible place to start, you could just say, like, <laughs> hey, let's go here. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I want to preface with that is that it's not for ours to carry, but we do carry it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> we carry the energetic weight of our ancestors, and it is a multidimensional phenomena that will impact both our physical and mental health. And part of why I was interested in doing this this visiting with you is because this is information that is ready to be shared with the world. Um, this is not stuff that we have spoken openly about. Like most of our work is, is quite private. Um, we don't do social media. Uh, we, we really try to work in a very old way. Um, but because we see the world in the state that it's at, um, there is this level of ancestral energy that impacts everyone's consciousness. And we have to choose to go through a process to free ourselves, um, as well as freeing our trapped ancestors um, in all of the patterns and bundles that we carry uh, in our consciousness that do impact physical and mental health. And so it's a multidimensional issue that's not openly talked about or very well understood. I mean, it's understood in maybe some circles, but in our work, what we see is it has a direct impact on people's physical health, a direct impact on people's mental health. And in our current systems of of health, they aren't able to address a lot of issues that are tied into these types of realms. And so when I made that comment to you, it was really with the understanding that we have the opportunity to free ourselves, Mm -hmm. but we have to do the work. 
And that work is related to some, some very specific phenomena when it comes to ancestral healing, because that is a like that's a specific thing in terms of how we understand it, how it works in your consciousness, what it actually means. And we've designed specific processes and alchemic tools to be able to clean the DNA, work with the lineage, and um, essentially uh, free an individual and free their relatives. So, yeah, yeah. And that's a good, I mean, it's more of like, it's like a, it's a saying yes, right? It's kind of like a, okay, I'm open to doing the work and there is, there are ways to do this. It's not, we don't have to just sit in this stew of shit. Um, there's an opportunity. There are people, you and your wonderful wife, Maddie, and others that like are doing the work themselves, have done the work and um, are literally opening up to um to support this shift in consciousness. I think that's kind of like what I want, what I, I want to like bring forward for that is like, we can do this together. And I do, I would love it if you could share, um, I think we just have a couple minutes before we need to take a break, but before we do that, if you could kind of share like, um, maybe a story about how spirit started tapping you, um, I know there's many, but if there's one that kind of like comes <laughs> forward. <laughs> um, so a primary story uh, I would say is, you know, I've always, one of the things that I've always, you know, you could call it a curse, but I've always worked with or tried to help dead people. Okay. Ghosts, mm -hmm. trapped spirits, uh, spirits that are trapped on the earth or trapped in certain vibrational states. And it's just a gift that, that came pretty early in my life. It was a curse for a while, or I considered it that, but then I learned understanding what I was being taught and what I needed to do and essentially how to, to help transition these trapped spirits. And so about 17 years ago, um, I met uh, an individual very briefly and her grandfather co 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 collected uh, and grave robbed sacred artifacts. And at the time I was, uh, you know, I was, I was sweating in a neepy a lot with, with friends and relatives from South Dakota and I was just learning. Okay. And, um, and so I was, I told this woman, I said, you're, it's illegal for you to have this stuff for one because of the Native American Graves Repatriation Protection Act. But then also like, it's really bad it's really unhealthy and everybody in her family was psychotic and extremely sick. And her grandfather had had dementia and that's another And but basically the causation of this over time can be dementia. So she brought me this box, cardboard box. I convinced her to bring me this stuff Had human bones in it, had a bunch of sacred other moccasins, medicine pouches, blood on some of that stuff. So I took it home and it's, I had to go to Bozeman. This was in Livingston and I got, I went to Bozeman. I got a call from my friend who was my roommate at the time. And he said, Hey, there's drumming coming from your bedroom. And I'm sitting on the couch and I'm really scared with your dogs. And I said, okay. So I come home, I call my sort of mentor at the time who was a Dakota native. And he and said, Hey, I'm not qualified to hold on to this stuff. Can you take it? For now and he said he would so he took it and then he made arrangements with certain medicine people um in south dakota you weepy men to get it back so we eventually went back to south dakota we went into a, a weepy ceremony with this stuff i was invited because i was the one that brought it mm -hmm. um in that ceremony um this there's there's there seven spirits attached to that stuff. Only one of them was Lakota, so the medicine person could speak to that one. And his name was Old Man Young Boy. And he had left to just go on a walkabout. And this was about 180 years ago. And he ran into some fur trappers. And the fur trappers got him drunk. They cut out his tongue, cut out his eyes, stole all his stuff. 
and was left there to die. He had been following around his sacred materials for 180 years. And he spoke in the ceremony and, and it was this oldest voice and the old, it was like old Lakota in the old, old voice. And he was thanking us. So while that ceremony went on and in those ceremonies, like sometimes as, as a, as a white person, you don't know whether to pee yourself or run out of there screaming. <laughs> so I'm holding my sage bundle, praying. And it was the first one I'd ever been in. And all of a sudden I feel this gigantic paw on my head and it reached my entire, around my entire head. And I could feel the claws, I could feel the fur, I could smell and then I could smell this giant face smelling me up and down. It was a grizzly bear. And I sat there just praying, but ultimately just scared shitless. Mm -hmm. um, but just praying and that bear held on to my head for a long time and then eventually let go. Not long after that, a song came, it was a song from the bears. And then I had these other experiences with bears and nature. And uh, what it came to be was that in exchange for bringing that stuff back to those people that had been stolen so that it could be laid in the cemetery on the on the reservation it went to um the bear gave me this medicine um as a gift and what it allows me to do is just to pull energy off of people situations mental physical sickness and that's what's has been the initiating point to leading into this deeper understanding of this ancestral energy that is trapped on people's consciousness that is ready to be worked with and what that connects to. And that, and just to briefly describe like what that mm -hmm. connects to is in 28 generations, which is about 500 years, there's about 10,000 ancestors. In 500 years, a lot of really horrible things have happened. There's been just diaspora all over the earth. Lots of raping, pillaging, murdering, death, and so the reason why death rites were so elaborate historically in our old, old ancestors is because they understood that the transition of a soul from the physical body into their next journey was an elaborate, was it was a very serious thing. It mm -hmm. needed to be protected, it needed to be understood and honored because that that movement was was a sacred thing and it had to do with the infiniteness of a person's spirit or their soul. And so over the in 500 years is a relatively short period of time but if we just look at 500 years it's about 10,000 ancestors if you're counting cousins there's no way all 10,000s of your ancestors in that last 500 years have transitioned properly to the other side there's and so what that means is that there's an incredible amount of people's ancestors that are trapped on the earth in the astral plane and when they're trapped on the earth they're trapped in vibrational states um they're on like these feedback loops and it could mm -hmm. be in fear it could be in anger it could be in power it could be greed it could be in perversion it could be a combination of things but they're just on these loops the loops creates energy which then because they're connected to you connects into your dna which then can manifest different types of patterns and energies in your consciousness that are completely related to those trapped ancestors, uh, which then can be reinforced through your own lived physical reality. So a couple of quick examples, endometriosis, for instance. When we've worked with women with endometriosis, we often find that there's a direct correlative pattern towards to rape, severe wound trauma going back many, many generations. Mm -hmm. um, what would another one be that stomach issues, right? Various stomach issues, um, whether it's ulcers um, or, or liver issues, oftentimes have shown themselves to be direct related to extreme forms of fear that are ancestral patterning that are tied to ancestors that are trapped in states of fear. And so the processes we've created 
our thrum understanding what is happening with people in the ceremonial space, what we see happening in their physical and mental health. And as we go through, I can share some more specific direct stories that will explain this. Um, but the understanding of what the process is, is essentially you're cleaning the ancestral patterns that have been imprinted upon your consciousness and your DNA due to these trapped ancestors while also helping to uh, move these ancestors along so they are free. And we have all sorts of alchemic and spiritual tools that have come to us through prayer and ceremony that we use to help with this process. Yeah, and I love that I have not shared, but the the two things you brought up are two things that are in my um, ancestry, which we haven't talked about. Um, so it's just interesting that those were of all the things. <laughs> <laughs> But let's um let's just take a um let's just take a quick break and then when we come back um we'll just see there's I have there's so many there's so many ways I want to go and I'm we're just going to we're just going to see where we end up. Great. So we will be we will be back in a moment. Welcome back. Tonya here, and I'm here with Luke from the Safer Walk Initiative, which I don't think I've mentioned yet. So I'm just going <laughs> to throw that in there. Um, there's been subtle little hints. Um, and I first, I want to, so Luke um, Moxie, the producer of the show on break, was asking, we are curious, what is behind you? Um, for anybody oh, that can is, see. Are, this is, is our apothec apothecary. So okay. these are all different plants um, okay. that we make into different medicines and tinctures for people. Okay. So Moxie, to answer your question, it's not for chili. It's not beans. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an apothecary. And my Maddie is, she's the, I mean, I, I was trained how to do this. Yeah. She does most of the herb gathering. And okay. Love it. Love it. Yeah, so if anybody is tuning in um, over audio, but behind Luke, there's like a whole wall of different types of jar, glass jars with, um, it's just like a beautiful background that I, yeah, wanted to just draw attention to. So, and that might've been a form of distraction now that I see because <laughs> that is that is something that I do. No, Maddie you know, said we, you do it in front of the apothecary, so. Here, yeah. So it's kudos, good. Maddie. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I agree. It's it's beautiful. Um, yeah, so I think a couple of things coming up. There's two, and I'll um I'm gonna let you kind of decide which which route we go. So um, you know, you've mentioned an EB and we you talked a little bit about ceremony sweat. And um, so I do want to go there. I'm not sure if that's now or and then I also really want to talk about the bear medicine and um you know, what that looks like. And, you know, I'm giving you uh, full rights to talk about even what happened right before uh, we got on here today. Um, just like how that manifests within you, if you want to share either one. I'm giving you that open. Where would you like to go, sir? <laughs> Probably the, the first one, because it's the foundation of how the second one came. Yeah. And so um, to understand the bear medicine, it's important to understand the tradition we've been blessed to be a part of mm. the, the tr Trinupa tradition or the, the tradition of white buffalo calf women's pate sans we. Um, I was introduced to this when I went to college about 20 years old, and I was blessed mm. to have a mentor. Uh, who is a Monacan, but he was a Chinupa carrier, a Monacan native, but a Chinupa, a Chinupa carrier. One of the interests with the Chinupa way, there's seven sacred rites. One of those rites, which I find extremely important, and, and I've been taught from people who have, from Lakota men who have said this to me, is the Honka ceremony, which is the making of a relative. And anytime you finish prayer, and this way you say, which means all my relations. 
Mm -hmm. So you're constantly reaffirming your connection to everything in the universe. And with the Hong Ka ceremony, it basically teaches us that we're all related. And the Chinupa tradition is practiced all over the world, all different races, genders. And my gentleman who, who taught me, who would say to me, has no matter, does not matter the contents of your skin color. It only matters the sincerity of your heart. And if you carry that chinupa with a sincere heart and are doing what creator asks you to do, that's the only thing that, that matters. And so I was blessed at a pretty young age, you know, I was 20 to 24 to have a mentor who taught me a lot about this stuff, taught me how to build sweat, you know, but I was, I was afraid of, of it because I had mm -hmm. seen the power. Um, and so I came to Montana to go to grad school, and my graduate was in the American Studies, um, particularly regarding culturally based education and how to improve those systems um, for for Native populations and so uh, for communities. And so when I got here, I started sweating consistently and had various different mentors. Start was asked to go to Sundance Fire Cap sang, and lo and behold, it led to this moment where um, I was told by the Sundance chief to build the sweat. And I was like, "Really?" It's like, "Yep, just make it small. Don't th just do it for yourself and your family." And I said, "Okay." So I go home after the Sundance summer, and I'm I'm scared. I don't I don't want to do it. So my house got struck by lightning. <laughs> and I built a, a neepy the next the next uh, day. <laughs> yeah, message like, received. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and that's sort of how my life has gone. Like it's never been I want to be this or I want to do this. Mm -hmm. It's always sort of been me getting pushed along by the spirits to fulfill what I'm supposed to. Do fulfill here on earth which the sacred walk initiative is part of that the, the foundational teaching of that being is we are all have a sacred purpose on the earth that purpose is in connection with our free will our free will is connected to our soul which is connected to the creator's will and so when we are able to reclaim our free will fully and part of the ancestral healing process is reclaiming your free will. Um, it anchors our purpose into physical reality and creates pathways for, for that to be manifested in the actual life that we live. Um, and that's what essentially the Sacred Walk Initiative is, is, is creating pathways for people to find their purpose on the earth and be able to manifest that. Um, and so... I started running sweat, small, very small. And then just over time, the dreams would come, different dreams of Chinupas came, and I just sort of followed the lead, several, quite a few humbleches, four day fasts on the hill. And I've just followed the path that has been laid for me. Um, the bear came two years before I started running sweat. And so um, I carried that for a little while, not really knowing what it meant. And I, I've never, I've never talked to anybody, but very few people about that, that experience. It's just sort of um, what I've learned about the medicine as time. And, and so what started to occur is in ceremony after the bear is I would, I would feel the bear come in and it would go to somebody and the key here is is if if a person is say they have severe depression and they understand what that severe depression is tied to they understand what's tied to in their own patterns and their choices they understand how it may be tied ancestrally into um their lineage right mm -hmm. and they consent they they both are willing to make the changes they need to make and they agree with their free will they want that removed so I can't take stuff off of people 
if they they are not ready to have it removed, right? The time mm -hmm. of times of, and this is we've been told this specifically, the times of like where Jesus would come up and cure the person of lung cancer while they smoke 10 packs of cigarettes the next day are <laughs> over. Yeah. You know, we have to take responsibility for how we live, what we put into our body, how we speak. And healing can come, profound healing can come, but the individual has to do their part um, mm -hmm. as well. And that directly correlates to bear medicine because I can't take the sickness off of a person if they are not willing to do what it takes to also help themselves and anchor in their free will. And so if they do, then it's an energy that I'm able to feel. Just like mm -hmm. we were talking this morning, like when I texted you, I said, I'm really feeling you. And <laughs> How are you feeling? <laughs> Uh, Not good. I was feeling fear. I was feeling resistance. I was feeling anxiousness. Um, and then sometimes it just feels very misqualified and, and just yucky. And so that's yeah. bundles of energy that's coming off of you from your ancestral line, specifically because you invoke the two laws of the law of free will and the law of freedom. Just a couple right. days ago. Yeah. Yeah. I said yes. Yeah. Yes. And so stuff is going to start peeling off of you. That is not yours. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is right before you're about to get on the call, like I dry heaved like probably 10 times, you know, <laughs> that was all energy Thank you. that was ready to come off your consciousness. And then I took it off. And the way it processes through me is, is that I, I feel it and then I remove it or the bear removes it, and then it goes through my physical body very briefly in mm -hmm. these large energetic bundles, and then I, like, energetically bomb. Similar to in the Southern tradition with ayahuasca, mm -hmm. and this is something I've worked, like, uh, well, there's been a lot, because we really believe in that condor eagle prophecy. We haven't even um, talked about that, and that's, okay. When Future you, discussion. When you take that medicine, it's physical. It's a physical thing. So when you take that, the energy then turns physical. So part mm -hmm. of the vomiting is this purging, okay? But it's physical because you're taking something in physical that is then purifying. Mm -hmm. In this way, you're in the anipi, and that's purifying you through the hot rocks and you're sweating. But the bear is able to remove that energy and it processes through my conscious very quickly and then i energetically uh dry heave it to the rocks or in this situation it would be towards our altar in the house mm -hmm. and i've actually i interestingly enough i've had individuals do the ancestral healing down in the south and then up with us <laughs> and they always joke like because i had one guy who was doing it, he was going through both processes and he went down to Peru in a cave and he vomited for 14 hours straight. Oh. And he said the black sludge that was coming out of him was like all of this toxic karma. I mean, mm. he was Ukrainian. So it was all of this toxic stuff that he was cleaning out of his DNA. Yeah. And then he comes to our ceremony and I'm pulling it out and they're laying on the buffalo robe just content mellow feeling <laughs> and so it's a lot it's a lot gentler of a process and he even said that he's like yeah it's way more gentle in the north it's just a different way right yeah um but that's how the bear works and a big part of our altar the bear altar is courage and love so the foundation is unconditional love always the foundation mm -hmm. is if you're laying on that buffalo your ancestors have suffered even if they've done horrible things the horrible things they have done were probably predicated due to their own suffering whether it's in childhood or whatever it may be right mm -hmm. and we have to stop that so you don't need to go through intense suffering to heal you don't need to go through intense suffering to heal. Suffering is a tool. It teaches us, but we have to learn to choose not to need to. We have to learn to stop choosing suffering 
as the way that we want to learn in the world. And everything that is regarding how our process works and how our altar works and how the bear works is all about getting people to understand like they can surrender, they can let it go, they don't have to carry that burden, they can allow the love to come in, then mm -hmm. they just have to start living that. And that's the biggest thing. How do you live it? Because yeah, ways used to be in, in, in intertwined in every single thing that, or every part of life. Like I once had an elder tell me that 28 days, lunar month, right? That was the traditional mm -hmm. month. Every single day had a different meaning. And yes. everything from breakfast, lunch, dinner, to getting up to sleeping was tied to what the meaning of that day was, which was tied to the greater belief structure and understanding of how the cosmos works, how the spirit world works. And so there was never any compartmentalization or separation. It was a part of how you live. And so how do you live in this modern world while still having a way of life that's anchored in spirit? And that's, mm. that's a challenge because the common model is the retreat model, which yeah. doesn't tend to help people learn how to live with, with meaning and without compartmentalization. And that's part of what our work has been is to create a container that people can live through. That's very simple. Anyone can practice and it doesn't cost money other than having to buy some tobacco and fabric, but <laughs> like it's not, it's designed for everyone because part of what we're trying to regenerate is how do we live as humans? How do we live with one another? Um, what is our way of life? What, what does have meaning in everything that we, we do, right? And what you yeah. learn when you go into these ceremonies with the ancestral is how much unconditional love has burned out, bred, been bred, literally been vanquished from the line. And then also how important community is to healing, particularly spiritual healing. The community is, is so important. Um, and so many, so many come from broken homes and split up homes and lack unconditional love in their childhood years um and when you go through an ancestral healing process part of what you're doing is 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 learning how to accept unconditional love from the universe and actually walk within that in the day-to-day -day life and what a lot of people say is that wow when i don't have the ten thousand pound sack of rocks on my back mm -hmm. um, uh, it's I'm not used to engaging in the world that way. And it takes a little bit to learn how to do that because you develop patterns and understandings of how to survive in the world based on that 10,000 pound of rocks, right? Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's a story I, I think would be poignant is that uh, had a, a woman, she was Japanese descent, particularly Okinawan. She did our ancestral process, took her like six months to prepare. And she said, I used, she used to carry around, she felt it in her body, this deep hopelessness. She felt it when she was a little girl. She knew where it sat in her body. She felt it every day of her life. When she did this process, she was in her early 40s. So she had been carrying that hopelessness her entire life, felt it every day of her life from, from very little. Mm -hmm. You think about what that does to a person's consciousness, how it causes them to form relationships, advocate for themselves, use their voice, engage with the world with strength or with purpose. And we go through the ceremony and all of these ancestors came into the ceremony. They were all like, what's the point? What's this is it's useless. So they in that suicide energy and the hopelessness energy. There is no point. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they were cleaned, they were healed, they went through the process, they all transitioned. 
next morning, che you know, checking in how she was doing, she said, yeah, I took a shower and I looked for that hopelessness in my consciousness. And she said, it was the first time in my entire life I haven't felt hopeless. <clears throat> and that was not a burden. That was hers. It was a burden mm -hmm. she carried. Yeah. But it was a burden uh, that wasn't, like, she didn't create that in her life. But if you think about that energy, carrying that your entire life, how it causes you to learn how to survive in the world. And then the biggest thing for her, she said, is like, wow, I got to figure out how to exist differently because I'm not carrying that hopelessness anymore. And, and I really created a world or survival mechanisms to how to exist carrying that energy. Yeah, I mean, it's part of your, problem. yeah, it becomes part of your operating system and your rhythm right. of, I mean, yep. it's how you, um, I don't know when you were describing that, I just imagine like her walking, trying to walk through a river that, you know, she's not drowning, like she's walking, um, but she has the weight, like the weight of the river and she's trying to go like upstream, you know, like that's, it's that, but you don't even realize because that's part of what you've always known and what you've always felt. And so it's being, and, and you just go through it because it's that survivor, you know, that's mm -hmm. probably the survivor in her was like, I will get through this. I will persevere because I, because I am. And then to not feel that, to feel that lightness and being able to literally dance on top of the water and, but, but not understand how, because it's always been, nearly drowning right and that might have been a little bit of my own I, as you're describing that i could feel obviously i'm not i don't have that same ancestral who knows um but no, i feel it's, that it's that correlative to what you're going through you have learned to survive in the world based on carrying this karmatic yeah. and traumatic weight that yeah and you know as you work these processes that will eventually fully be lifted and you'll have to learn how to navigate, which is, it's really easy to do. It's just interesting because that is a real thing. Feeling hopelessness your entire life that is solely connected to your, your ancestral line impacts your mental and physical health. Like it impacts yeah. your reality. And then, yeah. That's how potent this kind of energy is at this particular time. Yeah, and I will share, and I I don't, mm, let's see, how do I share? I'll be curious how this comes forward, but you know that I've had um, suicide in my family on both sides. And um, I'd be remiss to pretend like I didn't have my own journey with dance with that um, mm -hmm. for years. And, um, I just want to put that out there because I know, I know how it feels. And I also know how it feels to say, like, I don't want to do this anymore for years. And yet my fire inside my fire that says like, no, you're not, you're not going anywhere. It's not your time. Like, but having that, like that inner conflict, again, it's that polarity internally. And then somehow, um, you know, it brings me to, you mentioned the, um, the lightning. Uh, my grandfather was struck by lightning and somehow lived through it um, two mm -hmm. times. And um, several years ago, I was out camping and I swear uh, I don't know what was happening, but this storm came in and I was right on the long, along the, um, the Madison river. And I was just there with my son and my two dogs and the storm came out of nowhere and I was terrified. And all of a sudden lightning struck, like, I think it was about 10, 12 feet from like, I, every, every sense was like I, I felt the electricity. I, I don't even know. I can't even describe it because I've never felt anything like that before. And then I swear I heard, it was like, 
the energy of either a bear or a moose. It was like some big animal. Um, and I was just, I was like, oh my God, I can't, I literally can't do this anymore. Like this is, I surrender essentially. Like I've had the lessons have been a plenty. Like let's, I'm open. Like let's figure out how to, how to move forward. And then fast forward to the present. And we are here in this moment, having this conversation and, um, it is both, I, I will say it can be scary. It can, there's a lot of fear around looking into some of these ancestral pieces. Um, and I think a lot, a lot of times it feels very lonely and going back to what you said is just like, it's that remembering the community, like community and the unconditional love, that love that is within all of us, um, that we all share. And my God, when we can like actually connect with that, like I just, again, it's like the words, it's hard to describe the words to go from a place where for years, suicide was part of my every day and to now we're yes okay I was crying earlier I was a mess I didn't know how I was going to show up in this place and but I knew that like that's part of the healing like we don't have to hide that right like like no we're here we're here together I feel you like you are my brother mm -hmm. you know like I, I feel that I feel that and I really want that for, for all of us. Um, yeah. There's so much power there. Yeah. That's, that's why, that's why we're here, you know, yeah. so that, I mean, it's, it's coming like it, it is happening, but the collective suffering of humanity is, it's a lot. I mean, even yeah. today, you mentioned the election today and just the collective angst in all different directions was palpable. You know, and we we had a sweat on Monday and the sole intention of it was just for unity. Yeah. Unity and for the ability to take accountability for how we want to live. Um, you know, because we have to be able to come together and the way we come together is by being willing to go within to heal some of this conflict that we all carry, right? Yeah. When you're on that path, which is why it's emotional, because it's it's profound. It is profound. Mm -hmm. um, and when you work with those laws, which we'll talk about in the next, I'm sure in the next episode, like, it, it connects you to your free will, which then allows for the healing to occur. So you've anchored into that process has begun. Mm -hmm. And now you just have to find your rhythm with that process. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes courage. So I give you a lot of honor uh, <laughs> for being willing to just dive in because that's what I said in the beginning when we were started talking about this was you're not going to be able to not go through this process if we're going to come on and talk about it because it's it's a real thing yeah and so yeah i'm thankful i'm thankful that you're willing to 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 go through this process yeah thank you thank you luke and i um i cannot believe we're already at the end of the <laughs> show um, i'm not super surprised i feel like we could just talk for hours but um what makes me very excited is that I know that we're going to be um, coming back together next yep. time. So um, I just want to share with individuals Sacred Walk Initiative. If you're curious about what Luke and Luke is up to with his wonderful wife, Maddie, um, check him out. SacredWalkInitiative.org. Is that right? Dot com. Dot com. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Of course you got a dot com. Um, so yeah, sacredwalkinitiative.com. And yeah, and then also just um, 
tune into what you're feeling, what came up today and just get curious. And then we look forward to seeing you again on the next show. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for listening to The Alchemy of Me, where we navigate the anatomy of humanity through the lens of science and spirituality. For more mind, body, energy, medicine concepts, tools, and practices to nourish the seeds, the light, the fire, that gold of intelligence that is you, tune in every first and third Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about me and my work, please visit TonyaJohnson.com. That's TonyaJohnson.com. 